Ooh, the lighting is about to just be non-existent. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's your fairy godmother Mint. I think I'm gonna have to close the doors because it's loud out there. <laughs> okay. Hello. Oh. Oh, hello, Willy. She's so cute. I have a sore throat, if you can't tell. It's been sore for like mm, a a good minute, you know, a good a good couple of minutes. <laughs> I have another video coming out after this video, and it was supposed to be a Valentine's Day video. I apologize. I was having some technical difficulties. Te technical, technical difficulties. <laughs> but it will be out for you this Friday. All the info is still completely relevant because it's just about herbs that are used for love. So. Still gonna put it out. Anyway, it's another Faye Wednesday, so let's go ahead and answer these questions you guys sent to me in my Instagram story question box. What is a Faye? A Faye is a fairy. It's just another word for fairy. And it just encompasses every type of fey creature. Sometimes when people are talking about fairies, they're just talking about winged creatures. And then when you say the fey, you're describing all of the creatures that are included in this realm. You know, like I said before, it's just like every type of goblin, hobgoblin, elf, troll, gnome, you know, mermaid, they're all the fae. Sorry the lighting is so dark, I took a nap earlier and so now it's getting dark outside. I tracked McGee. Uh, are there any protocols for dreaming about the fae? Okay, so that depends on whether or not the dream feels violent or malevolent or if you feel threatened in the dream. If you do feel threatened in the dream and you're being targeted in this dream, then some protection against the Fae may be something that you need. The form of a talisman, the form of jewelry, iron will protect you against the Fae. If you feel threatened by something, if something feels like scary and you're like, oh, I didn't like that dream at all. <laughs> but if it's a nice dream where you're meeting the Fae or you're having some sort of like ritual experience or just learning about them or traveling to their realm, then take that as a sign that they want to work with you or that you should learn more about them and become a little bit more accustomed to their way of life in their world. I think dreaming about the Fae is like incredible. It's one of my favorite types of dreams to have because there's so many things to learn and discover in the dream realm. It's, there are no rules in the dream realm. You can do anything, you can say anything, you can be anything, and you can go anywhere. So I think it's super fascinating and super interesting to, to go there in my dreams. And if you have a dream about the Fae, good or bad, write down that dream, write down all the details and try to decipher the meaning of the dream as well because it could be a message or a sign just like any other dream that it could be a warning or something that you have to look into, something you should watch out for, or something that will help you in the future. Okay, I brought a pen so I can cross off the questions as I answered them, and I, it's gone. And it's the second one I brought over here. I, brought, I had one color, and then I lost it, like, immediately. And then I brought over another one, and the other one is gone now. Like, Im like immediately. And it's just on this couch. Like, I didn't go anywhere, it's just on the couch. All right, number three. Any details about the Aziza Fae? So I will totally do an entire video about the Aziza Fae. The Aziza Fae are fairies from West Africa. Fairies, like I said before in the other video, are all around the world, all around the entire globe. They are everywhere. They are nature spirits. They are part of this earth. They are all over the entire earth. The Aziza are West African Fae and they are um, notorious for being helpful to hunters and to people who live in the forest. They live in the forest themselves and they are, um, they're very helpful if you are the hunters and gatherers and people who live off of the land. If those people are respectful and take and give evenly in a balanced manner, then they are often helpful for like hunting and you know, um, just survival life in general. So yeah, I'll totally do a whole video about the Aziza for sure. Question number four. Four? See, this is why I need the pen to cross it off because I don't remember what question we're on. How did you make the first step with communicating with the Fae? Okay, so we already did the video where I had those terrifying night terrors until I turned them into something better. Um, but the first time I actually sought out the Fae, I think maybe 12 or 13 years old and I was really really heavy into meditation at this time because it was such an interesting experience and it was just where I 
could really go inside of myself and discover different things about myself, about the world. It was just, I was just fascinated with meditation at that time. So, oh my gosh, it's getting so dark. Oh, I hope you guys can still see me. <laughs> the lighting is so dark. I was very fascinated with the idea of being able to travel outside of myself and go to different realms. And so the first thing that I wanted to do was meet a fairy. That was like something that I wanted to try to do. And I had all these fears about it as well. <laughs> really snorting. Because I was studying a lot and I read a lot of I read a lot of negative things about astral projection as well as positive things. And I had this fear that I would just die <laughs> when I was astral projecting. And it took me weeks and weeks and weeks before I actually had any kind of visions or contact, but I did spend one day just meditating all day just trying to reach out to the fae and then that night right before i went to sleep i had a really nice experience um basically just some whispers and some feelings and some like glowing lights and then i fell asleep but it was really nice it was kind of like a, a welcome sort of experience so that was really dope that was like my first time i sought them out the second time was when i was older which i think is another question about it mm -hmm, how did you make this yeah how do you work with the Fae? So the first time I decided to work with the Fae in a way that would benefit me um, was when I began to feel really ill in my early 20s. I think it was my early or mid 20s. I have Crohn's disease, as we all know, and it was like really, really horrible in my mid 20s. I was just like ill all of the time, just horribly ill all the time. And I decided to reach out to the Sylphs to offer me um, comfort. And for me, when I'm feeling really like ill, like stomach ill, and I'm nauseous, I get really hot, and I'm like sweating, and you know, you know how you get when you're like gonna barf, and you're like, Ugh, you know, you're sweaty and gross. That's how I felt like all the time. And it was, it's really difficult to feel like that a lot. And so one day I was just laying in bed, and I was probably crying, because I felt like shit. And I was looking out the window, and I just had this idea of asking the sylphs to come in and lend me a cool breeze because I was feeling very like overheated and barfy and just laid there and looking out the window. The window wasn't open. I was just looking out of it. And um, after a little while, I started to feel this breeze on my face and on my neck and like around my face. And I just laid there and, and you know, I felt the breeze go over my whole body and it was like so nice and cool. And I started crying because like that was such a beautiful experience for me. You know, I was just like, oh gosh, like, is this really happening? Yes, it's so dope. Like, <laughs> well, after that experience, that was when I decided to call on the, the Fae for singing and for comfort and just to basically help me when I'm feeling anxious about being sick. And I really didn't much when it came to healing myself because I just I don't know it just didn't I didn't think about it but when it came to just offering comfort and um, just not feeling alone when I was feeling sick I would call on the Fae for that and in return like I've always done um, I take care of animals I donate to animal shelters and to wildlife funds um, I clean up my local parks and local areas um, of trash and nastiness and stuff like that. I volunteer at my local parks and just basically take care of the earth and nature, walk as much as possible instead of driving. Those types of things are what I, I give in return to receiving help from the Fae. That was a long answer. <laughs> Where do you gather your information and knowledge and how do you sort out the nonsense? Okay, so I get this question actually like a really a lot because people um, do a lot of research online and there are so many different people who talk about magic and mythology and spirituality and um, the Fae as well and you just can't tell what resonates with you. Sometimes things sound like bullshit and you're like, what? Like the Fae only eat rice, like mm, what? Like you know what I mean? But I think that when it comes to that sort of thing, you have to trust your own intuition. Um, you can look into the credentials of the person that you're reading about um, or who's writing the information or you can check out the reputation of the website and stuff like that. Um, but basically, any information that you're finding out about this whole entire realm of life, it's good information. It's something that you can take from different perspectives and, you know, um, think about it and say, well, that doesn't make sense to me or that does make sense to me. Also research more about the subjects that people are talking about to see if it coincides with other information that you find. I'll be completely honest. I am a book learner. I do not 
take a lot of information from the internet unless it's something um, like mundane life stuff. I, I Google it. But when it comes to spirituality, I'm definitely more of a book reader. There are some people that I follow on YouTube that I really enjoy uh, watching and learning from. Uh, I mostly like to watch documentaries about spirituality in different countries and different cultures and read those books as well. And then that's how I gather my information. I also get lots of information just from talking to other people in the community, the spiritual community, other people who work with the Fae, who work with different elementals. Um, we just exchange information. A lot of my information comes from personal experience, trial and error, um, and just learning from other people, talking to other people and finding out what their experiences are, comparing them to my experiences, comparing them to experiences from people around the world and documentaries, just loads of books, just reading and, and like just researching and just, just like anything else that you want to learn about. You're going to have to read and research it and figure out what makes the most sense for you and you know, what things click for you inside your head. I'll put a list of books here that I like to read about the Fae and that make the most sense to me. I feel like I have the most authentic accounts and you can decide if that makes sense to you or not. But the library is your best friend. Literature and fairy tales also um, have a huge basis in fact or in mythology or folklore. So reading a lot about folklore in different countries will also give you lots of information about how people interacted with the Fae back in the day. I really think the more research that you do, the more you'll find what line of information is more correct for you to read. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. I feel like it's, sometimes I just don't make any sense. <laughs> is it possible to be drawn to a certain type of fae? Absolutely. I think of it in the way of, you know how you crave something that your body needs? Say you have like a little bit of a cold and you're just like really craving oranges or like citrus because you need that vitamin C or you've been drinking a lot of like alcohol or coffee and you're just craving some like ice cold water because you know it's going to help to hydrate you and make you feel better. I think that we're drawn to the type of fairy that will give us what we need. So if you're drawn to a uh, dark fae, maybe like a gankana or something like that, which is like a, um, like a seduction fairy, a lust and passion fairy, you might be needing lust and passion in your life. You might be having a stagnant time, you know, um, a driftwood boring time in life and you may need something wild and crazy to just rile things up and to make you feel alive again. So you might be drawn to um, a dark fae that has to do with lust or with just attraction or, you know, lowering your inhibitions and just having an adventurous time. If you're feeling over emotional and like you need a lot of comfort and you're just like crying a lot and just feeling like you have a lot of feelings, you might be more attracted to water fae, mermaids or undines or selkies. Um, definitely depends on what you're going through in life, you might be attracted to a different type of fae. And also, there is the belief that the fae feed off of human essences. Like they feed off of your grief or your anger, or your anger, your anger, or your lust, or you know whatever you're feeling. They feed off of that, and so they'll they'll induce that in you so that they can feed off of that energy. It's definitely it's definitely um, a possibility to be attracted to a certain type of fae, depending on what's going on in your life at the time. Do you have a favorite fae fiction book series? Yes, I do. Wicked Lovely is probably my favorite book series of all time. To me, I really love it. I probably read it six times. I just, I really enjoy it. And I think the reason why I like it so much is because of the way that the fairies are described in the books is very real to me. It's very accurate to me and my experiences with the fae. Like so, so, so much. Like when I remember the first time I read it, I was like in awe. I was like, Wait, really? Because I've had this exact experience. This is exactly the same experience that I've had. So I think that I, I really feel seen by reading this book. It's a very Twilight type of love triangle series. I don't know how many books, is it? like five books? Five or six books, it's five books. It's a very love triangle, Twilight, fairy Twilight series. But if you're into just like some YA, a fantasy fiction type of thing, try the Wicked Lovely series. It definitely has a lot of pretty accurate folklore ties in it. Um, the writer did a lot of research and actually has a lot of information about the Fae in the books that is pretty accurate. It's really accurate. And she also puts references before like every chapter of where she gets the ideas for the like the characters in the book so that you can research 
the like folklore equivalent to what she's talking about in the book. So I really like the series. That's another reason why I like it a lot is because it led me to reading a lot more about the Fae because she puts her references right in the book of where she gets the information. So it's really good. It's a fun series to read. Wicked lovely series. Boom, I love it. And the last question we're going to do for today are there fairies for the four elements? Yes, yes there are. For air, there are sylphs, which I work with the most. For water, undines. For earth, gnomes. And for fire, the salamanders. And we will talk about them in the next video. We are going to be starting with the earth fairies, and I'll give you lots of information about them, what they look like, what types there are, and so forth and so on. I'm so happy to be doing this series. It's so much fun. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions. If you have any other questions about the Fae, you can pop them in the question bar, question bar, in the, in the comment section below, and I'll write them down, and then I'll do, in a month, another Fae Q&A video, just so we can continue answering questions and, you know, chatting or whatever about the fairies. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, and thank you for tolerating my creaky, squeaky voice and my son coughing in the background and my dog snoring in my lap. Have a beautiful, magical day. Look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you love yourself. Call your mom, tell her you love her, call your dad, ask him what's up. Have a beautiful night of sweet dreams and goodbye. Mwah!